Hey everybody, this is Colleen again. Uh, today we're going to work on Timon. Yeah, I'm pretty excited because uh, we already did Pumbaa. And over there you'll see I did, uh, I didn't make a tutorial on this guy, but I did him and I decided not to outline him. And I think it was a big mistake because the outlining definitely enhances it. Uh, but I think since once I cut all the translucent away, he doesn't look too bad then. Anyway, back to today's project. So here I've got um, kind of a beige tan color. And that's going to be for his smile line, I guess you would call it. This is for his body, his face. This brown is going to be this background around his eyes. And also this small part inside of his ears. And then this dark uh, maroon kind of color is going to be for his hair and also we're going to use it on the tongue and then of course we're going to need white for his eyes and teeth and then we're going to use black for the inside of his eyes along with his nose and the little highlights up here like his eyebrows and the edges of his ears um so one concern i had from um somebody who had seen the pumba video that i did was that it was using too much clay, which I did agree with that. So I made this picture a little bit smaller than the last set of pictures. So it's only, let's see, one, two, three, four uh, inches by maybe like three inches. So it's, it is a little bit smaller. If you go too small, it's really hard to get the detail lines in there really good. And it kind of comes out looking like a mess. Believe me, I've done enough messes to know. Um, anyway, so... It does still use a fair amount of clay, but for me personally, and I don't know about you guys, you can always try to do a smaller picture. If you think you have got that down, that's perfectly okay with me. Um, you can also just not do as deep of um, a cane. Like when you're building it, I try to do between a one and a quarter and one and a half inches thick. Um, you could try just maybe just doing an inch. It's whatever seems to, to work best for you. But for me, I use a fair amount of clay because when I get finished this project, I want to have enough of this character cane to do quite a few projects with. I don't want to spend all the time it takes me. You know, these videos only take me, uh, when you watch them, it's only about a half hour long. But to be honest, these clay canes, the character ones take me anywhere from the easy one, three, three and a half hours to the really involved ones. It takes me like a good six hours. So it's kind of a commitment and I hope that doesn't scare anybody away because to me in the end, they're really worth it. It's also because I love Disney. So that doesn't really hurt either. Um, it's been working for me best to start from the bottom of the picture and work my way up. That seems to be a good plan. So I'm going to go ahead and do that today. I'm going to start by building this whole um, beige smile area first. So I'm going to build the bottom part of the line and then show you where I put this little chin definition in and we'll come back and take a look at I'm that. I'll show you here that this is uh, right here is one um, piece of clay and it's rolled out on the pasta machine at, and at the one which is the thickest. Um, when I do that and I line it up with the mouthpiece it's got uh, a portion of that mouth that still needs to be filled up but not enough where I can put a whole nother row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece about the length of that mouth and I'm going to taper it and stick it right on there so that I'll know exactly where to put his black smile piece. Just to show you, now I'm back and I've got this piece that is going to go right where that smile is. I'm going to take a piece of um, black that I'm going to roll out fairly thin and I'm going to cover that and then I'll continue to finish building the rest of this beige up big guesstimator. Um, I don't really measure it that closely and there's a lot of trimmings and you could just do what I do here, make a stack of them and then I re-roll them when I run out. So I rolled this to a seven, which mine goes to a nine, so it's not quite all the way to the thinnest. You put this next to it so it gives you an idea. Um, I'm probably going to cut it at about right here and give it a little extra because it's going to need a little extra space to do that hump over. Also, one of the easiest ways to make this graded is to take your fancy dancy little blade and when you cut ooh ha okay there you go you just cut it on an angle instead of cutting it straight up and down and that sort of gives you your angled p 
piece and it sort of makes a curve and then you can just kind of smooth out those ends a little bit. All right, I'm gonna put the black one and be right spot on with the estimation. If not, it's pretty easy just to trim a little bit off. But now that we got the smile in place, all we're gonna do is come build the rest of this beige on top of it. And when we get to the end, I'll be right back to show you. Now that I've got the smile all in place, and the, I don't know, mouth part, the bottom of his mouth, whatever you wanna call it, um, all put together, I'm gonna wrap this all in black and then I'll come right back and then we're gonna start uh, working on the teeth. And when I do that, we're gonna flip this whole thing upside, whoa, upside down. Now that that face, or you know, hello, smile. It's been a hot minute. Uh, anyway, now we're back to putting the first portion of the teeth together. This is about the, the size as far as the um, piece of clay you'll need lengthwise, but you can see that right here, it's really thinned out. And right here it thins out. So I'm gonna do like I showed y'all and take that um, blade and, and shave it down this way, oh hello, this way and that way. Anyway, once I get that done, then I'm going to slice them and put the little um, black lines in for the teeth. And then all we need to do is put the black across the top of here because we're gonna sit it onto this section which has already got black on it here. Um, if you can look, you can see it's angled like that. I kind of just put the picture by it. Saw where I was going to need to put the teeth in. So you just make a cut like this and a cut like that. And then I went over here. I took really thin little pieces and I stuck them in and then you just push it back into place and bam, you got your bottom set of choppers done. So while it's still laying here, um, because it's still more stable than trying to pick it up as all these separate pieces. I'm going to go ahead, actually, I can't go ahead and cover it. I'm going to have to flip it over to um, put the black piece on. So I'm just going to kind of squeeze it slightly together like this so that it's all in one piece. You take your blade, come underneath it, scoop it up, flip it over, and then actually you can just literally flip it right onto the black and then cut around it. I laid it right on top and then we'll come right here, come up against it, cut it down and it is all ready to place right, <laughs> where do we put it? Right there. <laughs> oh, it's just so much fun. And um, then we'll come on top of that after we place that in place, we'll come and put that background of the red of his mouth. I guess his tongue possibly? Sure. He's Why starting not? to smile. I'm liking it already. I just wanted to show you what that looks like and then we're going to come in and we're going to take care of that tongue. I cut this little piece and it's just about the right thickness you can see. It's, well, I don't know. If, can you see? <laughs> it looks to me to be right about the correct thickness. There we go. Of the tongue. Um, I also noticed when I was doing that that this is a little tiny section here that's like kind of like a maroon color. So I had this, uh, where is it? Here it is, alizarin crimson. And I just took a little thin slice of that. That's a primo color. And I'm gonna just chunk that in there when I'm finished, but that's gonna be enough to fill in that little area. Anyway, you can see that this side is kind of a blunt end. So one side will stay pretty blunt. And then the other side, we're just gonna cut it on an angle like we've been doing with our blade. And we're gonna put it on top of the teeth. Okay, now let's get his tongue in place. Real quick, I just wanted to show y'all, if you look and see that little seam part, because when I was measuring it, I was off just a smidgel. So I know that's the official term. Anyway, my daughters laugh at me all the time, so you can get used to it and start laughing at me too. It's funny. Anyway, so um, I just added on, it's not gonna matter because once you reduce these canes, you're not gonna see any of these little lines and things like that anyway. So we're all good with that. So we got that side done, and now I'm gonna make um, this little maroon section. And I th think possibly the easiest way to do that is actually gonna be to make these teeth and then put in what's left with the maroon fill. So next we're we're gonna go, man, my light keeps moving or something. Or, you know, I'm just crazy. Anyway, so we are gonna work on these teeth now. And we are gonna start and with a piece of the white. And then we'll lay it out, see what it's gonna look like after we 
After we fit it in place, then we're gonna have to lay it on our board and do some slices again to put in the little lines for the teeth. So what I've done here, um, I took the first piece and I put it all along the back to measure it. And it was mostly enough, but not quite thick enough, but it also wasn't thick enough for two whole pieces. So the first one I did on one, which is the thickest on my pasta machine, then I came back and I, um, I did the next one on a three and I only put it a portion of the way. And if you look, hey, here I am. And if you look closely, you'll see, I took the while it was on this and I just literally shaved it into to like meld and you can almost barely see, well, if you hold the right light, but it just, it just blends right in with that. So with that, we have the right size. Now we are going to lay it down and come across here. Oh, let me put all this stuff out of the way. Here, let's see, maybe it'd be easier if I do it this way. So basically, basically that's where the teeth are gonna go. So I'm just gonna come along, just like I did with the bottom, and I'm gonna put lines along each of these to have the teeth. So you, again, you're gonna cut down this way on it. We're gonna make one, two, three, four, five. We're gonna make five lines, we're gonna cut them, put them back into place, and then we will put a piece of black along here and lay it on top of the tongue, and then that'll give us the ability to come in here with what's left and fill it in with the maroon. Now that all our his teeth are in place, I'm gonna go ahead and cover the top and bottom with black since nothing has black on it here. Then we'll put the top and bottom with black and then we'll be able to come in and, and uh, pack in this little bit of maroon. Now that we've got his cute little smile, you can see that we do have some extra space in here. And that's that maroon. So I'm gonna take a smaller piece, maybe like um, reduce down to three on the pasta machine and fill that spot up and then push it against it. And the little bit that's left, I'm just gonna fill up with a little bit of more of the rest of the maroon. You look and see that maroon section is all filled in. And I'm looking here in this teeny tiny smallest little area right about here. Um, it's got some more maroon. I'm just gonna pinch a little piece, put it right in there, and then I'm gonna cover these two maroon spots with black since all the rest of it's got black for when we do um, his actual face portion. Hey, and for an update, there you go. There's his cute little mouth. I think we're just rolling right along. Um, the next thing I wanna do before I put this brown portion here is I wanna go ahead and make his big old nose. Um, and then uh, that'll give me a better idea of exactly how much space I'm going to have to use in between these the two. Nose built up here. And before we finish it all the way, I left some room because we have to put this brown highlight in there. So I took a piece of the brown about the right width for this. I'll put it up here, but before I do that, like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and curve the edges this way and this way so that you can... Um, Give it that highlighted look where it tapers on down and then we'll come right back and take a look at how that i've got out our one last row of black that's going to going to go across here i'm gonna put it on top and i'm just going to kind of smooth the edges out to make it all nice and even and then we'll start working with this brown little, little nose to start filling in between these it's two almost like a pinocchio nose right now anyway um so i'm going to go put this one layer of brown on the thickest and I'm gonna put one layer of that because before I fill the rest of it in, these two little smile lines need to go here. And in order to put them all here, I wanna have that first layer of brown in so I can put it over that. And then we'll continue filling so in the I'm brown. back and I did fill the brown in. Then I put the, the two um, smile lines here and here, and then I started filling up, and honestly, I totally spaced out and forgot I was supposed to be videotaping this. So I did miss that step with y'all, but honestly, didn't really miss anything. Um, you can see here that the smile line, just like that, you can see it's gonna be here like that. So I think it's coming out just as we had hoped it would. Um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and finish 
filling out in here. Now, when you turn around and look at it on this side, you see that his face goes, the brown goes just a little bit down on his cheek, which we're gonna do. And down here, it shows that it goes some too. But I'm just gonna, so I'm just gonna also taper it off here and here, and then the, the beige is already here for his chin, okay? I came down here and I added it on and then I spun it around. I stopped it here at the nose. This is kind of not making nice pretty cuts because this is some sticky, sticky clay. I ended up uh, mixing it with some Crap Smart white clay, the Michaels clay, which is kind of apparently like um, Sculpey a little bit, but it's all the white I have right now, so you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Anyway, back over here, I'm gonna finish filling this area in with all the tan and come around and do the same thing on this side and I'm just gonna go all the I'm not gonna go so we're back over here now I'm not gonna go all the way to the end I'm just gonna probably come to about right here taper it up and then fill it in until it's completely done um, I don't want to fill up above the nose because if you look here you can see that there are two lines and we want to incorporate those lines so he has like a little wrinkle for his nose. I got the two eyes made. So basically, you can see I covered them. Um, I did the, the little gully for the white. And then I just put a tiny piece of black back over it. Because you can see that um, otherwise it'll bleed into the other white. So now that I've got these two, we're going to um, fill in the the whole eye area with the white. The easiest way to start that is to make your first run to cover this with white because if you look here, you can see that that's about the distance to the end. So when I wrap it, I'll know that the eye is done here and as well when I do it right here. And then it just becomes filling in one side instead of both sides. You also wanna check when you go to wrap it around that on each side, that the little white dot in the eye is in approximately the same place in um, respect to where the cane that you're, I mean, the um, clay that you're wrapping it is so that this one doesn't get twisted and you don't have some cockeyed little white eye. a little freaky looking, but there are the start of his eyes. So on each side on the inside here, you see it's all the way where we need it to be. So it's just a matter of filling up back and forth, folding over and uh, filling these up. So I'm gonna go do that and be right back. And one more to go. So we don't just have this creepy, long looking weird eye. <laughs> Y'all, I think some serious progress is being made. We're getting close. Yes, I'm excited. All right, now that we have the eyes on, the section we need to do next is wrap a little bit of brown around the eyes. Let's just put some light on the subject so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. See, now you can see it better though. So the brown goes here and here, and there and there. And I think to be on the safe side, I think I'm gonna go ahead and before, where am I? Before I put the brown on, I'm gonna go ahead and be on the safe side. I'm gonna cover this in black a little bit right here to here so that when I put the brown on then it has the black the first underneath. brown on there I think that looks pretty close to what it um, supposed to look like I'm gonna put the other brown on this side and then we'll come back and put his little black eyebrows on top of that as we've discussed I know you're tired of hearing this but this is really soft clay which I'm a little disappointed about however that being said so it used to really upset me when it would kind of just form on the very front here. But what I realized is that it's not really as important. See, it got a little yucked up on that side too. Because when you reduce it, this whole front and back actual ends that you use, you're not going to be able to use them anyway. Because the clay, as it squishes out, these are going to be unusable at this very end piece. So honestly, it's kind of okay. Don't stress about it. Unless, of course, yours is perfect, which mine is not. So there you have it. Um, the next thing is going to be to make the black eyebrows. Um, if you look here and see, they're about the thickness of a one and they taper up in the end. So I'm going to go roll um, a piece of black out, put the black on there and come back and take a look at that.
good old smiling Timon. Okay, the eyebrows are done. And I realized that we want to go ahead and wrap around the brown part of the eyes inside of there before we try to stuff it with the brown. So now that I've done that, wrapped all the eyes, then I'm gonna go ahead inside and put the rest of the brown in there, and then we'll just have to put some hair on top. There we go. Just like this, we got his V-neck, uh, not neck, head, hello. Anyway, it's been a long day. Uh, all we have left to do is the red in his hair. So we're gonna take care of that real quick, and then we'll do his ears, and then we will be done. Before we start the red, of course, we had to cover it in black so we'd have our separation between the two layers. And now we'll make right, some hair. He's got some red hair on him. Um, I think it's looking pretty good, close to what it's supposed to look like. So what I did here was to take some pieces and we're gonna use that as his little flyaway hairs. I'm gonna first cover them in a thin layer of uh, black so that it'll be outlined. And then as I put them in, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick a little piece of translucent in between each one so that the definition stays. All right, so let's take a look at that. Um, I put the fly away on the first one and it's real delicate balance because you wanna make sure as soon as you stick the fly away down, you have to come back with a piece of black next to it so that it's right after the flyaway sticks out because you want it to look like his hair coming out. You don't want to have an outline of his hair sticking out. That wouldn't look normal. Um, the next piece I'm going to do, I think I'm just going to put a really skinny stripe of black there and then put a second flyaway and then put the third flyaway doing the same thing. And then I'll put the translucent underneath here to stabilize him. Got his hair all in place. Um, before we can put his ears on, we need to wrap all this exposed brown in a layer of black. So I rolled out another thin layer of black and I'm gonna do that. And then before I do the ears, I'm gonna come back and put the translucent, but I just wanted to get this black on real quick. Here we go, we're back. Uh, I have gone ahead and put in the translucent so I can try to hold those little hair stick ups, whatever you want to call them in place and all the outside is covered in black so now all that is left my friends is to do the ears which is first the light for the brown and then the black so I'm gonna do the brown first but because black is literally black I'm not going to outline the brown because it's literally going to be covered by the black and it's already got black against here. So we just need to do a straight um, half circles of the brown and then cover it with black. One we'll ear see. down, one ear to go. We are one ear away from completion. We did it. I'm so excited. Look at Timon. He's adorable. So I'm a little terrified about um, reducing this clay, the cane right now because of the softness of this clay. So I think even before I put the translucent in, I'm going to go and put it in the freezer for a few minutes to let it uh, kind of uh, harden up just a tiny bit. So just for informational purposes, I'm sort of gonna make this like a weird sort of triangular shape. I'm gonna fill in this areas here and here with the translucent and any corner areas here so that I can keep the shape of his face. And then I'll just kind of even this area out here and here. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna wrap some translucent around the whole guy. And then we'll keep our fingers crossed and um, try to go ahead and reduce it. I appreciate all y'all hanging with me today. And again, this is Colleen with Colleen's Clay Addiction. It truly is my addiction. And um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a wonderful day. And maybe I'll come back in the end and show you what it looks like reduced. We shall see. In translucent now, all he needs to do is be reduced. And we will see what we have. Alrighty, so in conclusion, a valuable lesson to learn is if your clay is soft and squishy, do something about it before you start building your cane, like I did. You can press it between paper to get the extra oils out, 
put a little cornstarch in it to help tighten it up a little bit. But for heaven's sakes, don't mess with gooey clay because this is what happens. I mean, he's cute. He's fine. He's all right. But he definitely would have been cuter with like uh, some cheeks instead of a big gigantic smile and basically nothing else. So I'm going to leave him alone for tonight. I'm hoping that maybe after setting overnight, he'll um, have relaxed a little bit and maybe I can finish reducing him and not have a whole messed up look like this. Anyway, thanks guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.